waiting for the amino acids and cold coffee to kick in because I'm still feeling a little bit jaded following yesterday's race at Mont Ventoux. Here's just one set of max effort rotating pull-up. Well, they were predictably hard going. I've got to say, I didn't even think I was going to get to 12. Very overcast still. More thunderstorms forecast. Back indoors now. Now in the final month, as I was heading into taking part in La Marmotte, which was going to be my main effort event for the year, I had been reducing the volume of strength training by about half in terms of number of sets and number of reps, particularly <clears throat> on the lower body. I had been keeping the strength training in the program, however. Because although I go nowhere near failure, I maintain a nice powerful movement and good form and therefore reduce the risk of undue muscle fatigue and nervous system fatigue, I think it is still important to sustain a base level of strength training, i.e. to sustain your base level of strength, to maintain good movement patterns, good form, and therefore when you pick things back up on a more structured, higher volume strength training program later on in the year, you're that much better for it. I'm going to continue with that theme, i.e. 50% of volume, because although I'm no longer doing La Marmotte, I'm working with there to find a revised goal or two, particularly focused on the cycling and the climbing, to keep me occupied over September and October. So here, it's going to be once again a reduced volume of trap bar deadlift in particular, just three sets, probably six to eight reps, very powerful, explosive movement going nowhere near failure, greasing the groove. And I'm going to superset it, with a deep press up. And there, on the trap bar deadlift, sorry, voice spiking upwards, the handlebars were raised upwards, reducing the range of motion, meaning you've got to lift the bar through less distance, makes it a little bit easier, need a bit less flexibility to get into position, which is the opposite of the raise of the ground press up, where the bars mean I have to go deeper into the movement, there's a greater range of motion, makes the movement harder and creates more muscle damage for the upper body. And with the upper body, because it's less obviously involved in the cycling, I am prepared to go just a little bit closer towards failure. Just about to complete the second block of step by step. Five repetitions of 90 seconds, starting at 110% of FTP, ending at 118% of FTP. I building for me from 320 watts to 340 watts for each 90 seconds. 30 seconds recovery, between each of the 90 second steps and 50% of FTP. Here's the first, 320. And the first block of five was proper hard. ERG is not engaged and I'm doing it on one one two because the gradient's fairly even and I'm getting used to staying seated and deploying the power.
Still finished. Point two, what's it gonna go? For me, that's another example of a relatively short but intense cycling session complementing the anaerobic strength training, but also for me personally because I eat loads of carbs yesterday, following the race at Mont Ventoux, the glycogen stores are full and it enabled me to complete this training, fasted on plenty of water, some amino acids, and about 150 milligrams of caffeine. What a sensational moody sky. And indeed, my mood is pensive this morning because on the deck, is Ed Laverack's pyramid training program. I'm gonna try it in real life with a new gearing on a Canago, the 32 cassette on the back. First, prepare the bidden, high five, a little bit of caffeine in that, probably have about 120 milligrams, 150 milligrams of caffeine, some amino work capacity, plenty of water, another one in the fridge. Well, I just completed a little warm up up Highgate Hill West and it's on Highgate Hill West rather than Swain's Lane that I'm going to complete Ed's Ultimate Pyramid, which comprises four minutes at 100 to 105 percent of FTP, i.e., 290 to 305 watts, two minutes recovery, three minutes at 106 to 120 percent of FTP, i.e., 306 to about 340 watts, that kind of thing, two minutes recovery. Then two minutes at 121 to 150% of FTP, i.e. north of 340 watts for me, for the two minutes. Two minutes recovery, one minute max effort, two minutes recovery and back down a pyramid. I'm going for Highgate Hill West because the gradient is a little bit more even. It steepens up a bit at the top. It averages about 7.8%, 0.8 kilometers. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of the road that leads on to Highgate Hill West in order to hit my four minute intervals. So, time for a bit of on-bike footage.
That end is disgusting. I think I was in the mid range of the power zones on the way up, but the very bottom of the power zone ranges on the way down. I'll report back in a sec. Early autumn. Look at those beautiful hues of orange, yellow, and a little bit of green. I adore it when we get to early autumn and the trees are just changing colour. Always makes me feel that five or ten percent more perky. I uh, don't know why. Anyway, I digress. Back to the training. Ed, that is one disgusting training. It's as much a mental battle, it is a physical battle. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I reckon. I hit your power ranges on the way up the pyramid. I was about mid-range in terms of the power ranges. A bit disappointed with my one minute effort. I was about 395, um, maybe 398 watts, we'll see. Um, wanted to do a little bit better than that, but there we go. However, on the way back down the pyramid, that is properly, properly emotional. And I was struggling really to hit the bottom end of the power ranges. I just about made it. And the thing that made a difference, and it made a big difference, is having this 32 cassette on the back here and if you like your climbing and your hills and your mountains and all that kind of thing and you're saying to yourself is it worth investing in a 32 on the rear and maybe a bigger derailleur like i had to categorically sorry porsche is trying to knock me down categorically yes it's a good investment because especially on the way back down a pyramid where i was physically really tiring being able to stay seated and spin to win made a big difference. Um, basically dropping that um, gearing into the lowest, easiest gear and having my little legs were furiously, they were spinning furiously in that kind of 105 to 120 RPM range, not quite sure exactly what, made a big difference. When the, when the watts were drifting below where they ought to be, being able to do that and spin to win and able to bring the power back into, well, the bottom end of the range at least, and uh, complete the training as Ed had intended. I reckon I fell about three watts short on that final four minute effort, but at the beginning of the effort on the flat, I was struggling to get the power down. There was a little bit of uh, road furniture, all that kind of stuff. And then I got my gearing a bit wrong. I was still in the big ring for too long on the way up. But overall, you know, I still reckon I was like 287 watts. And I reckon if I'd gone on another half a minute or so, I'd have been back in the power range. So super happy with the training. Now time, it's about 7.45 to head back home, get on with work and have a lovely old breakfast. And no doubt, a little bit of bakery to carve back up because Ed has still got a pretty tough old training lined up for me um, uh, for the week. And there's a really, really nasty one on Saturday. And definitely Highgate Hill West. <laughs> That's the evil little sister to Swain's Lane. So I'm really happy to get Ed's ultimate pyramid under the belt for the second time, first time outdoors. And I did indeed hit the required power ranges, mid to upper end on the way up the pyramid. However, on the way back down, I was very much at the lower end of the power ranges prescribed by Ed. And indeed, on the second block of two minutes, I missed it. I was 325 watts versus 350 watts. There you go. Super tough training. Very happy to get it under the belt, as I say. Um, the whole training, including mucking around and filming and all that kind of stuff, only took an hour 45. Calories burned, was only 650. Therefore, the emphasis now on the post-ride recovery is much more about repairing damaged muscle tissue with the protein shake and the hippie milk, and obviously the vitamin C and the green string to kind of calm the body down, boost the immune system, and generally aid the process of recovery and deliver vitamins and minerals um, for good blood health. So not looking to cane the carbs um, in this post-workout nutrition, hence, I've got an M&S ice spice bun, only 270 calories in that, very low fat, very nice, very indulgent. Um, and do bear in mind, I also consumed 50 grams of carbs, I about 200 calories pre the training. Hence, overall, you can see a very kind of restrained pre-workout, post-workout nutrition regime, and one that's not gonna to add too much um, to the waistline, i.e. hopefully 
not add to the waistline at all and maintain a nice WKG. Well, welcome to a beautiful Thursday morning and I'm looking to mix things up a little bit on the strength training today with a focus on the pulling movements. Tomorrow I'm going to focus on the pushing movements. Now the pulling movements are really good for working the posterior chain. In terms of the legs, that's the hamstrings and the glutes. In terms of the upper body, it's the back, but also a little bit of bicep action on the first movement, the rotating pull-up. The core is obviously involved throughout. As I say, tomorrow I'm going to work on the pushing movements, um, the press-up, that kind of thing. And again, as I've said in the past and previous vlogs, looking to keep the volume relatively low to avoid too much muscle fatigue and nervous system fatigue. So starting right now with the rotating pull-up. Well, 12A once again. Um, do two more sets of those. And it's downstairs to work in particular the back, the hamstrings and the glutes with deadlift variants. That's two sets of 10 reps on each leg um, for the single leg Romanian deadlift. Now on for the trap bar deadlift. Going nowhere near failure, you can see I cut the rep short when the bar speed slowed on that 10th rep. <laughs> <laughs> 